You know, when I think about this moment and what's happening, and I reflect back on where God's brought me from, and the various people that he's used to make deposits in my life. You now, my life is really a compilation of individuals that were used by God to play a major part in where I am today. Starting first with my mom, Patricia Joanne Edmondson, and raising three boys by herself, and making sure we always felt special and all the sacrifices she made for us. I mean, my mom would walk miles in the rain and snow to come and watch me play football and just sacrifice again and again for us. All that I am today is the person of John Edmondson is really, truly because of my mom. And as my mom got born again and she was committed to have us attend church, my first pastor was Bishop Baxter and his wife, Mother Baxter of Cathedral of Love Church. And it's there that that's where I got saved. And the deposit from Bishop Baxter in my life was that God was real. I mean, I remember as a 12 year old boy watching Bishop Baxter Sunday after Sunday with this passion, teaching the word. And it truly put in me that God was real. And then when I went to college, my mom, she began to attend Gothic Christian Fellowship with pastors Bert and Joyce Merriman. And there I experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit and praying in my heavenly prayer language. And it was there at Agape under Pastor Bert and Pastor Joyce that I learned the power of God and that God wanted to not only dwell in you, but he really wanted to flow through you and use you. And so when I got married, I married my high school sweetheart, my sugar mama, Aisha Maria Green, former Green, Edmondson. And we decided we were going to find a church that we both liked. And so one Sunday, I'll never forget, we visited this brand new month old church, Solid Rock Worship Center with Pastor Amir Khan and his wife, Otney. And it was there that both Aisha and I, we learned about the call of God on our lives to do ministry. I mean, we did youth ministry there. I became a licensed minister and a youth pastor and then became an elder in the church and then assistant pastor to Pastor Khan and truly discovered the call of God was on my life and Aisha's life to pastor. And what God truly used in Pastor Khan to deposit into my life was boldness concerning the things of God, to not back away from what God had said and to boldly go after it. And after eight years of being at Solid Rock and helping build the vision that God gave Pastor Khan and expanding the kingdom of God, we were sent out by Pastor Khan with his blessing to start and launch Victory in Christ Christian Center in November of 2000. As we started Victory, I mean, we began to look for a couple that was pastoring together that could pour into both Aisha and I in this new season of pastoring. And the Lord led us to the late Pastor Lamont and Pastor Connie McLean of Living Faith Christian Center. I miss Pastor Lamont so much, and I'm forever grateful for the deposit that he made in my life. Not only did he mentor me in order and structure for our church, but also how to teach the word in an in-depth and yet practical way. Now it was at that time also during that time that our paths also crossed with the late Dr. Miles and Ruth Monroe, who had become personal mentors to Aisha and I. And the deposit that that couple made into our lives was that of being purpose-minded and truly knowing how to expand the kingdom of God. In 2007, Pastor Lamont transitioned and went home to be with the Lord. And Aisha and I set out on this discovery journey to find the spiritual father that God would have for us. God truly, when I tell you, truly led us to Bishop Hilliard and Pastor Bridget of New Light Christian Center in Houston, Texas. I mean, when we, when God connected us to them and they received us as a son and daughter, unbeknownst to Aisha and I, our whole life and our whole church was getting ready to change. I mean, they began to stretch our faith in ways we didn't even know was possible to dream bigger and make a greater demand on the anointing that was in our lives. We've learned so much from our spiritual father and mother, and they put this deposit in us of faith on steroids and how to grow a ministry and build buildings. We are so proud and privileged to say that we are the spiritual son and daughter to Bishop Ivy and Pastor Bridget. And I mean, we are forever grateful for receiving us when we were fatherless and for loving us and caring for us in the way that they truly have. And that brings us to this moment of being confirmed as a bishop. You know, two years ago in 2015, while I was ministering at a men's conference at my Covenant Brothers Church, the late Bishop Ben Jabert, who I miss so much, and his wife, Pastor Sharice, at their church in Detroit, Michigan, three Covenant Brothers of mine, Bishop Matthew Haskell, Apostle Lawrence Hardy and, and the late Bishop Ben, they all individually got this witness of me walking in the office of the bishop. Now I'd already been walking in the function of a bishop covering multiple pastors as either their mentor or spiritual father. And I really didn't have the office of bishop on my radar. I was just simply helping pastors to help them. And so when I went to my spiritual dad about what was prophetically spoken in that meeting, I remember saying to him, 
but as my spiritual authority, I'm like, Dad, if you receive a witness that I should take on this assignment, I absolutely will. But if you don't have a witness as my spiritual authority, I'm really good where I am. And so I remember my spiritual dad said he would pray about it and he said he would let me know. Well, a year went by and my spiritual dad was silent on the matter and I was really good where I was. But on September 30th, 2016, while we were hosting a leadership summit at our church for 52 churches, training pastors and their leaders, I'd asked my spiritual dad to come in and speak that Friday evening and I had no idea what was getting ready to happen. Every believer has an anointing, Jesus. And when you understand that there's a power, there's an anointing on your life, your whole attitude changed. You are in situations where God wants to move. He wants to do something through you, Jesus. And what you've got to understand is he is able. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Look at the person next to you and say, there's an anointing on you. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. And I announce tonight, there's a bishop's anointing that's on you in Jesus' name. was at a meeting and, a, and somebody prophesied over him and uh, he got back to me and he said well you know I, I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna do anything until you say something and I said well man I ain't you better do something if God says something Amen. I ain't got to announce it you got I'm sitting over there God said now you announce it tonight Amen. everybody say trust, trust. your anointing and so with my spiritual father having a confirming witness, I truly embrace this new assignment from God of stepping into this new office. But I do it with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness for all the people, both those named and those unnamed, in this time that I had, who took the time to invest and pour into me. Your legacy lives on through me, and I can never repay you for what you've done for me. So I just simply say thank you, and I promise do a great job for God. I promise that's what I'm going to do, a great job for God.